I was born in 1960 at Lakehurst, New Jersey, and grew up at the Jersey Shore. I am the oldest of five children. I was named after my grandfather, Dominic Nursita, who I love to spend time with. I have two beautiful children, which are my inspiration, Nicole, 17, and Dominic, 11. My martial arts training began with an adult education class. This led me down the path to a higher level of training in the traditional Chinese arts of Shaolin Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Bagua, Xing Yi, Qigong, weapons, China, and massage therapy. After six years of training under the tutelage of my instructors, Patrick Hamvey and Mark Gates, founders of the China Han Kung Fu Academy, I started teaching adult education classes in Tai Chi and then later became a partner in the academy. I also studied under Master Randy Eli, a 10th degree black sash, and Master Gary Torres, an 8th degree black sash. I have taken numerous workshops and seminars with other well-known masters in the Chinese arts such as Leo Fong, YC Wong, Lo Dezhu, Gao Xian, Yang Fu Kui, and Henry Luk. I've judged at local, national, and international tournaments for 10 years and have students who had received gold, silver, and bronze medals. I was on the board of directors for the Guam Ping Yang Tai Chi Association and served as its president. I was nominated into three Masters Hall of Fames and received honors as the best Kung Fu school in Ocean County, New Jersey. While working full-time, training, and teaching part-time, I had a vision of opening my own academy branch. Then, in 1993, this vision was realized and China Han Kung Fu Academy opened its doors to its second academy in Brick, New Jersey. In 1998, I fulfilled another dream and began teaching martial arts as a full-time profession. Today, I continue to provide group and private instruction at my academy to students ranging from 5 to 85 years old. My website provides general information and virtual training instruction. I also produce the series of instructional DVDs that support the academy and the website. To date, the website has over 1,100 video clips and 50 volumes of instructional DVDs, and both are still growing. Instruction is being provided worldwide as a result of these efforts. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome. My name is Dominic Ruggieri, and today you're going to learn how to play the game. And the reason you're going to learn how to play the game is to protect your life. And it's simple, easy, and fun. And you'll be able to do it in no time at all. This new and unique teaching method is going to show you how easy it really is. If you can say red, yellow, blue, green and stop, tap, trap, hit, you just learned how to play the game and you just learned how to protect your life. When we play the game, we're using colors in order to help you realize what we want you to defend against or to protect yourself against. So the color red is used. And red universally means, I know you have the answer. Yes, it is. It's stop, right? Red light, stop. Right? You see red on a universal level, that usually means stop, do not enter, <clears throat> you know, anything along that line. So, in a self-protection mode, we put the red on the hand. Now, red is put on the hand because most people, when they try to hit you, try to hit you with your hand. So the red, we're going to use these colors as visual cues for you to play the game. 
And remember, it's a game. We're having fun. We're laughing. And as you do this, red, when red gets close to you, you need to stop it. So red is our very first thing that we want to worry about. Whenever red is close to you, that's what we're going to stop. I don't need to worry about the red that's way back here because that's not close to me. I need to worry about the red that's the closest to me. So red meaning stop because people, red grabs, right? Red makes a fist, it punches, it hits. So we want to stop where the threat is. So this is what the red is going to do. So it doesn't make any difference which hand. When you see red, when red is close to you, you want to stop it to get it out of the way. The second color we're going to use on our training bands is yellow. And I know you know this one too. Yellow, amber means, that's right, it's caution, be careful, be aware. Yellow is going to go on or is used on the forearms. Now the yellow bands uh, loosely go on the arms. They can slide, it's okay. Right, when you put them on, they don't have to be tight. You know, even if one were all the way, say, down by your wrist, that's all right. So instead of just using one, it goes all the way around. So if red is the hand, yellow is going to be the part of the body between the wrist and the elbow. So yellow kind of implies this whole section. If I stop red, there's nothing to keep yellow. That's the next threat that could get be used against me. So anytime that I stop red, I always want to be cautious because yellow usually starts to follow. Whether it's yellow on the same hand or I stop red and yellow is used on the opposite hand. What are we going to stop first? The color that's closest. And in this case, Red and yellow are actually fairly close, but I, it's yellow is probably a tiny bit closer. You always want to keep the red and the yellow, and you'll always work with the color that's closest to me as the player, trying to not let it get close to me or to touch me. Because if that yellow comes in and touches me, then they're going to end up scoring a point, which is where we're going to. And in self-protection, that's going to allow you to be hit and we, that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid being hit. So be cautious of the yellow. It's there. Just be cautious of it and know that it follows. The next color we have is blue. And I know you go, I got it, I got it, I know what blue is. No you don't. Blue is kind of universal. We use blue because I like the color and it's a primary color and primary colors are useful in helping people learn. So blue for us is going to mean safety. The blue is going to go to the upper arm. Blue on the upper arm is going to mean, now you're probably catching right on. You're going, I know what that means already. And you're right. It means from the elbow to the shoulder. So we have from the fingertip to the wrist, from the wrist to the elbow, from the elbow to the shoulder. The ultimate goal of what we're trying to do here in the game, and this is what's going to make it safe for you as the person, if you need to protect your life, is we're going to use the blue. And the blue being safety, and the blue is a trap. And if you notice, I take my hand, if I put it on blue and I put it right across Nicole or across the other player, it cuts them off and it traps them and it allows me to score my point with the confidence and safety to know I can't get a point scored back on me. And if I can't get a point scored back on me, that means I can't get hit. So we're playing the game and the first four levels of the game are trying to get you to work up to doing this with the blue. And it's really not that hard to get to. And if you can do this, 
that's awesome. And it's going to work all the time. It will trap people regardless of how big they are, how small they are. It's always going to trap them and you're always going to be safe. So blue is our safety. It doesn't make any difference if I have it trapped this way, this way, or this way, or this way, or any other way. As long as I know that I have this and it's held, this isn't going to happen. Nothing will be able to come in on this side. It doesn't really cut this other side off. Yes, we know that. But you do have another hand, and we can always trap that other side as we get further into the game. And we address all of that in other levels of the game. So just know that blue goes from elbow to shoulder, and it's the whole part, right? And this is our safety zone, and this is what we're trying to work toward. Last but not least, we have ourselves green. Now, I know you got this, and you're right, 100%, green means go, all right? Green is our target for the game. And when we start, we're going to use green targets on the shoulders. Now, because it's a game, and because we like the people that we're playing with and we want to play with them again a whole bunch of times, we're going to hit the targets instead of hitting them in the face or the eyes or the throat or any of those places. However, the green targets do symbolize where you would hit an opponent. As the level goes up and as you go through the game more and more, know that any of the, the green targets, shoulders up, mean everything to the upper body, to the head. You know this, right? Do you know that I have to really say that if you hit somebody in the throat, you're going to hurt them? No, you, you know that intuitively. Do I say if you're in a situation and you need to poke somebody in the eyes, do I really need to tell you that if you poke somebody in the eyes, that's going to hurt them? No, you kind of know that intuitively. You know? So all of these soft places, that places you wouldn't want to get hit, are all targets. Well, that's what these green targets mean above the shoulders. What I'll do is I'll have them put the targets on other parts of their body as we play the game. So if Nicole lifts her hands, I'll have them with anyone. I do it with adults too, right? Where would you put the target if you wanted to hurt somebody? Right on her belly. Oh, that's good. And where else would you want to put that target? Oh, I might want to put one back over here because I don't know what's there, but I know if I poke myself there, that hurts a little bit. Okay, well, you have two sides, so let's put one kind of over there. That's really good. And I've had people do this, and they like to do this. They turn around, right, and they'll, they'll turn around, and you'll have their back to them. Well, if I put these little targets right over their kidneys, right, their low back, I end up with targets. Well, there's another thing right down the middle here and they call it your spine, and you hit that. Now remember, you can't get any points in the game unless you touch the target. So if you want to make the game, if you say, oh, this is too easy because I can just touch the shoulders, well, just start putting the targets. First, where would you want to hit somebody, right? Think about it for a second. We're kind of just working the upper body right now. Any place that it would work, now, say, let's make it more fun. I have to be able to twist that person or turn them so that I can get them around, which builds that level. All right? So now we have green. And that's our final color. Those are the four colors that we're working with. So let's start going over the rules of the game. Your objective, as you see on the players, we have green targets. The targets are your points. That's how you score a point. So when one player is doing the taps and the traps and they touch the green target, a point is scored. And then the game is going to continue and you can't get that point until the green is touched. It's going to take you 11 points to win the game. So it's going to be first player to 11 points wins the game. So before we do anything, we're going to stop there. 
right? So all you know is that you're not going to get a point for touching a person anyplace else other than where the green target is. As we go through the game, we're going to start off simple and then start to make each level a little bit more difficult and ask you to do a little bit more in order to get to the green target, in order to teach you all of the things that you need to know. It's really fun, so get ready. We're almost there. So we've gone over our colors, red, yellow, blue, and green. Well, red, yellow, blue, green, we do to start, and the colors give us that visual, so we're seeing and we're relating right to it. That's eliminated the whole left-right question, and what do I worry about first? We've explained all that, the color that's closest to you. Now you're going to work to getting away from colors, so by doing all of that, the game is giving you a very defensive, how do I get away from it? So this is what we're going to go to next. Red, yellow, blue, green translates to stop, tap, trap, and hit, or score a point. If you're playing the game, it's score a point. If you're in a self-protection method, it's hit. So, what is a hit? Janet makes a fist. She's, right, this, if this were red, if she had all of her colors on, I've moved away from colors so that you can see that you can do it without the colors. We want you to work toward doing it without the colors, but if you're doing this, with little kids and smaller kids, you're only going to take one little piece of this at a time and work it. And what do kids like? They like all the colors and it's fun. So we put the colors on, we put the stickers on. Do it to all these different ways and you're going to see it's very intuitive as you start to do it. If this is red, we always want to stop red. In the game, stop and tap are almost the exact same thing. Now, what you want to have is a light touch. So light touch, whether the hand is open, closed, or they're going to be hit with any other part of our body, we want to stop. Light tap, light touch. No smashing, no pushing too far away. If the point is going to be on my shoulder, I only need to move that that much. And I stopped it. So it's a stop. And a tap is very akin to holding. And holding without grabbing. This is a grab. And we really don't want you to grab. We want you to just hold with your hand open. So tap, tap. Trap on the blue. Trapping on the blue, again, is our safety. This is what's going to cut people off. If I can trap, trapping means getting people stuck. So they can't do anything. So you're playing the game. You see these colors coming to you. You're tapping. Now if we go back to the climb across and away exercise, you're tapping and exchanging your hands. You're going through this. We're trapping. There's green. We see that point. We get the point. So what we want to do, tap, tap. Tap with the side, tap with the inside. It's light. And it's a way to just move the point that's coming toward you away, or the red or the yellow. Move it away from you, either side. Like, don't grab. When you grab, people tend to tense and lock up too much. You see, if you just go really, really, really light like this, and always maintain in one hand contact, you'll get really used to being able to do that. Later on, advanced levels of the game, yeah, we go back to, we show you, okay, you can grab. It's just when you grab, you gotta remember to let go. That's why I tell people not to grab, because they grab and they, did, and they don't let go, and the next thing you know is you're, you're fighting each other, and that's what we don't want. So you're just going to do a slight, a light touch. Light touching is all you're looking for. If the person moves one or two inches, that's more than enough. So tap, tap, trap, hit. Tap, tap, trap, and hit. Right, trapping is always the upper arm. Hitting is always to the green, wherever the target is. Right, light, it's a light touch. You can do it fast. As you get faster, it gets harder to do it without holding on or being relaxed. And just relax and have fun. You'll see, it happens right away. You've done this a million times. You ever play patty cakes? 
When you play patty cakes with a little baby, you don't do that. It's patty cakes, patty cakes, patty cakes. Or you, you do this simple exercise, right? You, I put my hand on the floor. Janet puts her hand on top of that. I put my hand on top of that. She puts her hand on top. Tapping your hand one on top of another. Now all we're going to do is add that climb across and away, and then we're going to start to play the game. And that's the kind of feel that you want to get from doing this. First, we're going to give you a nice simple exercise that really helps you develop the coordination of what we're doing in the game. And I call this exercise climbing across and away. And it's a simple way to learn how to just simply exchange your hands. All right, so we're going to start, we're going to use our colors to help us as a training aid as we work up to playing the game. So we're going to put our green stickers on the shoulder. We're going to take our training bands and we're going to put our blue training band around the upper arm. Not too tight on the training bands. We're going to take our yellow training band, put it around the forearm. It's okay if it's a little loose and it's okay if it slides around. Don't worry about it. And we're going to take our red training band and we're going to put it around the hand. The red one you might want to pull a little snug so it tries to stay on the hand. Now this is a, a simple hand exchange exercise, which is really what the game is trying to teach you to do. So Dominic, being my player, my partner that's going to do this, being the player, he's just going to hold his arm out. And what I want to do is I want to climb up these colors, working from red to yellow, yellow to blue, blue to green. And what we're going to do is we're going to either push these colors with either side of our hand with to away, away from you, or across, across the front of you. So doing it with both left hand and right hand, you're going to have four times that I'm going to do it to one arm. It doesn't make any difference the order that you do it in um, or how you start. So if I start my hand to the red, I push away. I take my hand, I push the yellow across. I take my hand, the back of the hand, I push the blue away. When I have the blue away, what's left? My hand exchanges, the last one, and I go to green. Now all I'm going to do is take that same exact exercise and repeat it. Hold your arm, right? The uh, player that's keeping their arm out while we're doing this, to hold their arm a little bit stiff. Now I'm going to take the palm of my hand, right, or the inside of my hand, and I'm going to go across. I climb up to yellow. I climb up to blue. Now you see the green? The green kind of went to the front of him, but that's okay. The green means anything right in the shoulder area. I put my hand on the shoulder, and I move myself to green. Now we're going to repeat that again. This time I'm going to use my opposite hand. So I go red goes away. I switch hands. Yellow goes across. I switch hands. Blue goes away. The remaining hand, the hand that's left, we're back to the green. But we're not done. We get to do it again. All right. This time using the back of the hand. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to learn how to use the palm side of the hand and the back side. So with the back of the hand, we're going to push the red across, the yellow away, the blue across, and hit to the green. Once we've got that all done and completed, we're going to take and let Dominic put his hand out. And we're going to repeat the same exercise Again, starting with either hand. It doesn't really make any difference. We're going to go away, across, away, hit. We come back. Away, across, away, go to the green, which is going to be our point or our hit when we get to this, the self-protection part. We're going to switch hands just one more time. We go away cross, away, point. 
We come back one last time. Across, away, across, point. As you do this more and more and you start to practice this, what you want to do is just see how fast you can actually do it to somebody. So if Dominic's arm is out as the player, he's going to hold his arm a little firm, right? And I'm just going to do one, two, three, four. And then I try it again. One, two, three, four. And you practice this working up, going from red to yellow, yellow to blue, blue to green. If you can do this, you've just captured the essence of learning how to protect your life by playing the game. Now we're going to do another exercise, and I call this bone twisting fun. And that's just what it is, because when you do this, be gentle with the player that you're working with, because you could hurt them. It's the easier, it's really easy to do. You don't even realize it. And this is a simple way for you to learn how to grab somebody and to control them. And again, it's just a simple exercise. So, and one of the things that it serves as, which I'm going to go from this position where the hand is on the chest, and this hand being on the chest allows and implicates many times someone grabbing you. So we're just going to take it from here. And it's just a very simple exercise. Like the last exercise we did, we're going to use one arm, but we're going to use both hands doing two things each time. And it's really simple. So what we're going to do is anytime you grab the pinky edge of the hand, the pinky edge goes in, goes in toward the middle of the player's body. Anytime you grab the thumb side, it goes out or away from the body. Now. There's no writing wrong, and there's no left and right. You haven't heard me say it. It's very rare that I will even say it anywhere it's in here because there's no right and there's no wrong. If I take either hand, all I have to know is that if I'm getting the thumb side, I have to turn it out. If I turn it out and I'm not having any effect, I use my other hand to make a fact. And it's that simple. All right, so the exercise goes like this. Does it make any difference which hand you start with? Does it make any difference the order that you do it? As long as you get all four of these in. And it's just a practice. All you're doing is just a very light practice. Just smile, have a little bit of fun, get into it. You'll see, and you'll notice that every time I twist, either in or out, how you're being effective, because you'll notice the shoulders of the other player are crooked or they're bent. And that's exactly what you're looking for. You're bending them. That's how you know you're doing it right. I don't have to apply any pressure or hurt anybody in order to do it. So the exercise goes like this. Thumb out. Hand goes back. Pinky. Pinky goes in. hand goes back. Thumb out. You're always going to end up one time when we both have left hand forward and always on the thumb side where you can't turn it enough to do anything. Her shoulders didn't move. You'll always need the other hand on only that one. But once you get it, just keep it going. And then pinky, I grab the pinky, and I go in. So I did it with one hand. Now I have to do it with the other hand. I go thumb out, pinky in. So we did four. Then we're just going to switch. We come back. I go thumbs out, shoulders bent. Good. Same hand, pinkies, in, shoulders bent, good.
thumb out. No shoulders bent. Bad. Two hands. Good. Good. You see, that you know, as soon as you start to do this, you're going to see it works every single time. Grab the pinky. We go back in again. Shoulders. Good. Now, it gets, it's more fun than that. We want you to have so much fun that you can't even stand it. You're doing this all the time because it really is that much fun. There's two other things that you need to remember. So it's pinkies in, thumbs out all the time. Now, if you want to control the person, if you want to hold them in position, if you will, we're going to keep them long. Their arms are long. We're going to keep we're going to do this pinky in, but we're going to keep this arm really long and we can just rest our other arm right there like it's not doing anything and we're okay. That's nice and long. We turn the thumb out. We leave the arm out nice and long. And if I just keep pulling this, Janet, right, she just wants to keep following along. We're nice and long. Same thing when we do to the opposite side. I keep it, turn it, nice and long. I keep and turn it, we're nice and long. Okay, we have one more. We turn, we're long. You see her arm stays long, but her shoulders still go. Then they're short. Short is to make people to go to the ground. It makes pain, so go easy. When you go short, short is her shoulders are going, but I'm bringing my hand toward her. If I put my hand on her, she's not going to do anything. But if I just bring it to the side and I say down, she goes down. And you're going to see, you're going to do this with someone. And you're going to be doing it, and you're going to be sitting there playing this little exercise, and you're going to see there are going to be big guys or big women or big children, whichever, and they're going to go right down. So shorts actually create a little bit more discomfort or pain. So shorts, and you can always use two hands if you want. You don't always have to use one hand. Short, and if they don't want to cooperate, like Janet's like, oh, that's not, doesn't feel comfortable. If you just push it and make it short, and I just twist, right? Does that, you feel anything, Janet? Janet's being so nice. She's trying to cooperate so good, right? Short, short. We make everything short. You see, she wants to go down, and she's feeling that discomfort in her wrist. She wants to go down. I, we turn, this is the twist, short, they want to go down to the ground. Done very quickly, do not do this to somebody quickly because you're gonna hurt them, unless you have to, right? You wanna keep it nice and gentle and soft. You see, just the way we did it. So, again, quick review, just long and short. Practice keeping the arms long, all four. Practice keeping the arms short or closer to the player. And then it's just thumbs out and grab the pinkies in. Doesn't make any difference what position you're in. If I'm on the pinky edge, just grab the pinky side. If I'm on the thumb edge, grab the thumb edge. Doesn't make any difference which hand I'm using. Doesn't make any difference what the order is. So practice just doing this thumbs out, pinkies in. You can do it to yourself. People think you're a little crazy, but thumbs out, You'll see when you do it to yourself, you feel this stretch in your shoulders and in your wrist, and then your pinky's in. And if you do it even to yourself long and short, you feel this stretch, which is a good exercise, and you feel the difference in how you can do it. And you go, wow, you can feel that. When you start to do this, and you start to shorten your hand up to yourself, you can feel the discomfort that comes along with it. Give it a try. Practice the exercise, because we're getting closer to doing the game. 